Because that foolish act is going to lead to something, good or bad. And so who are we? Everybody take a look at yourself. And if you were to die now, do you think your own frame of thinking can change it? Don't be so foolish as to think that I'm talking foolishness. Two men went into the same service center. Five minutes later, another one was dead. Just like that. And so we live our life day to day as though we're going to make it home. Only by God's grace. A saint texts me and said, Bishop, you know, the people on the job, they always laugh at me because I say I'll see them tomorrow if the Lord be willing. And I believe they said someone went home, what happened, and died. They never made it back. Well, they're not laughing anymore. All right, now. Man. You're not laughing anymore. I feel the virtue. Yes. Yes, Lord. And now the problem is, it's not dying. We all got to go. It's the condition in which you die in. Yes. What's on your mind when you die? What are you doing when you die? What's in your heart when you die? And you will die. Somebody said, what the Bible said, I tell you, mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, you will die. Everybody ain't going to be changed except them that are righteous. So we can't use that, but you're going to leave here. The problem is, what's in your heart? I'm trying to get you all to see the reality of God and stop acting like we're God, because we're not. Stop acting like our attitude and our frame of thinking can change what's already written, because it can't. Stop acting like we can correct God, because we don't have the wisdom nor the know-how. All he has to do is show up and show out. All God has to do is call you to question. He has to, I feel the virtue. All he has to do is confront each and every one of us and call you to question. If you be God, then show me your power. As he said to Job, where were you when I created the heavens? Put the stars in the sky. Where were you when I commanded the seashores to go, amen, the waves of the sea to go and then go no further? Where were you? Who are we to question God with our feeble minds? We can't even get through the day and be pleased with ourselves. I'm trying to get you to understand that we need him. We need him. You didn't create yourself. And every act you do, you will give an account for it. Yes, Lord. Every act you do, yes, Lord. you will give an account for it. Yes, Lord. Yes. You don't choose your parents, and man didn't choose God. Yes. Adam woke up to the God that created him. Yes. And so you need to take heed to yourself and, and, and not fulfill the scriptures that say men are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Yes, you can love things more than God, yes, but you got to answer for it. You tell the truth about the fruit is bad, but who's the judge? I'm not the judge. You're not the judge. But the word of God is the judge. If you don't think it is, prove it wrong. They've been trying to prove it wrong for 6,000 years now. But it's still here, but all the haters are dead. How do you explain that? All the critics are dead. But the scripture is still standing. But all the critics are dead. Now, if Jesus were here right now, I asked this question before, what would you do different? Could he cook? Can Christ hook up with you right now and live with you for a whole week and you change nothing? You see, the problem is with a lot of Christian folk is that they just talking. Reading a book but never experiencing it. But I ain't just talking. I believe in hell. Somebody asked me why. I'm glad that because I've seen it. I've seen the pathway of hell with my own eyes. I've seen the outer darkness and I've felt it. I've seen the holy angels in white apparel. I've seen these things. And I've felt the wind and the fire. What do you know? What have you seen? And if you have seen these things, then what's your excuse? Not living right. 
Brothers and sisters, make no mistake. You won't be the first to rise up with pride. It happens all the time. Don't you know the majority of the world will be lost? The majority of the world is not going to heaven. Not going to the new kingdom. Why is that? Because of pride. Because they love darkness rather than light. Well, if darkness is your choice, then that's your choice. But you better be careful before the God of light calls you into question. Then what you going to do? When he says, it's time for you to give an account. Then what you going to do? Everybody needs to take a look at themselves and examine your heart as to why you do what you do. Yes, Lord. Because you're going to have to give an account for it. Amen. Listen, let me tell you something. Whether you believe God or not, whether you believe he's real or not, whether you believe the word of God or not, I can close this book. Yes, Lord. And it's still going to flip the pages. Amen. It's still going to come to pass. Now, this is what's so amazing about the word of God. We got people saying, I don't believe in God. I don't, and I'm talking in general. Man, I don't believe in this. I believe in evolution. And they don't want to read the book. They don't understand it. But I'm going to tell you, it only gives more power to the book of God because I tell you why. It's a powerful thing when you don't believe in something, but yet it still affects you. Amen. You don't believe in it, and yet it still comes to pass, and you are a part of it. They don't believe in it. They believe in evolution, but they ain't never seen a man go back to a monkey yet. I've never seen a man turn into a tree yet. But to the believer, to the unbeliever, from dust you come, from dust you shall return. Now change it if you think you can. Change it if you got the wisdom. Change it if you can correct God. Change it if you think you know it all. Change it if you got power to sustain your life. Change it. You're going back to dust. Who said it? God Almighty. Read verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. I'm talking to those who have received the same light, precious faith as us, as the apostles, as the true church. The rest of you fit in. Read. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. He has given us great and precious promises that if we keep these promises, we shall be made partakers of his divine uh, nature and we will escape the corruption that is through the world, in the world through lust, evil desires. How do you escape lust? By following the pattern of Christ Jesus. The way of godliness and holiness. He says, and besides this, given all sincerity, add to your faith virtue, courage, strength, praise. Read. And to virtue, knowledge. Add to virtue, knowledge. That word knowledge also means science. Real science agrees with the word of God. Add to your virtue, knowledge. In other words, as you have praise, as you walk in faith, then obtain knowledge. How do we obtain knowledge? The beginning of the freedom of God is the beginning of wisdom. How do we obtain knowledge? By taking heed to the word of God. How do we obtain knowledge? By praying and submitting ourselves to the spirit of God and allowing the spirit of God to guide us into all truth. Read. And to knowledge, temperance. And while you're learning, get a little bit of self-control about yourself. Learn to control yourself. Learn to walk in temperance. Read. And to temperance, Patience. And to temperance, learn to be patient, being in time, wanting nothing. Learning how to wait on God. Learning how to wait until your time comes. Learning how to endure. Patience means endure. Enduring all things that God may shape and make and mold you. Read. And to patience, uh -huh. godliness. And while you're waiting with patience, they didn't say live like the devil. Come on. But while you're having patience, then you got to live godly. Yes, and all your waiting, wait holy. What do you all think? Are you people hearing me? Amen. 
What makes you think you all can sin against the scriptures and still think Jesus is hearing you shout hallelujah every day? Don't you think God deserves more than that? The time is short. God Almighty came down himself and gave his life for us. God did. Is it, is, is it anybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, Not just anybody, but God Almighty did. Anybody want to say he didn't? Who's bold enough to say he didn't come? He didn't have to do it, and he submitted himself to the hands of sinful man. Mankind beat the back of their God, and he let them do it. But you better read the beginning of the book. My spirit shall not always strive with man. And so you get upset because the preacher says, straight up, walk right, give respect unto God who has given his life, and then you get mad because you don't want to let go of your pigs. You get mad because you don't want the preacher preaching against your sin. But you don't have no compassion for God who gave his life to bring you out. That's how man is. Man loves darkness more than they love God. Think about it. Oh, we're not perfect. And it is true. We're going to stumble sometimes, some more than others. But if you love God, you will get up. But let's not glorify the falling. But let's exalt the getting up. Because there's no good thing in any of our flesh. And we must take heed to ourselves. Lest we fall because we don't stand as we think. But we don't want to glorify the falling. Using it as an escape. Well I know I fall. It would fall. But let's talk about getting up. Yes sir. Hear the word of the Lord. Don't fault me for being weak. I'm not faulting myself nor you for being weak. But don't sit up there. Me, you, or anybody else make me think that, that the devil is stronger than the Holy Ghost. Amen. Understand what I'm saying. Yes, the same way I yield to that devil, which means to show that I can submit to something. It's not that I can't submit. Because I'm submitting to sin. I'm submitting to my own lust for the time. That means I got power to submit to something. Well, if I can submit to that, I can submit to God Almighty. Amen. Amen. I've never heard anybody say, get mad because you talk about their godliness. But everybody rises up when you want to talk about their sin. I never heard anybody say, you don't understand when we pray God for the God. You don't understand. I love that you go ahead and praise them when we pray them with you. But when you won't, don't want to do right, then everybody's pointing the finger. Nobody needs to point fingers at Bishop Brian for sinning. I'm pointing it at myself. Jesus. My own life is speaking. I can sin like a dog and you can call me the most holiest man in the world. I'll split the hell wide open if I die. Because let me tell you, I'm going to tell you a testimony that's greater than any man's word. That's the life you live. Jesus. And these are the last days. This is no joke. And the majority of people will be lost. You got a problem with holiness? Don't get in my face. Take it up with him who is holy. Because you're going to have to face God. Now you all know good and well. You're talking all this junk, acting all this fool. I'm just talking, son. Everybody got their own frame of mind. When you're sitting in some houses, you can let it happen. You can sit there and scratch your head, feet crazy. But when you sit in the face of a real prophet, you better watch yourself. Because the very day you leave this place, these words will come to pass and God will come to you and say, Now, what you going to do? Because the true gospel of the apostles' doctrine is not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but it's in demonstration and power, and that by the Holy Ghost. I don't want to hear what you think. Show me the power of God that's in your life. Yes, and if you get the will to do wrong and rebel, you can have the will to do right yes, and give God the glory. Yes, what is wrong with somebody saying glorify God? What is wrong with somebody saying live like God? What is wrong with somebody saying repent and tell God that you are grateful? What is wrong with that? And I know everybody in here don't believe what I'm saying. Well, what that mean? You're going right to hell. Straight up, straight down. 
Because I'm telling you right. Y'all hear me? Y'all get up and praise God and shout hallelujah. Yes, All I do is watch how you praise him. Amen. You, like Trump say, fake news, fake shot. Because <laughs> the Holy Ghost does things decent and in order. Yes, yes, he does. Fake shot. Move, my, 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 move, 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 me, me. And a higher. And every shaking of the butt ain't the Holy Ghost. Amen. But I'm shaking my booty in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right. <laughs> God does things decent and in order. Amen. Understand what I'm saying. Amen. He examines your heart. Yes, Why are you doing what you're doing? Jesus. The Holy Ghost has been impressed with me to tell you all something. Please, get real, for real. Mm -hmm. Quit playing around with things you think that are simple. It's the small foxes that spoil the vines. Yes, you all sit up here, people sit up there and hear the word of God and see what the word of God is teaching, and then you say, I don't see it that way. Who asked you how you see it? See it God's way. Amen. Amen. You see it God's way. And then you go out there and do your own thing and say, I know God loves me. Ooh, girl, somebody mad, somebody going to lie to you. You ain't in love with Jesus. See, some of us think Jesus is a flunky. So, brothers, this woman loves you. But she can't stand up on the men's faces. Her spirit is open. She's flirtatious. You can call her kissing side of your eye. Then she get back and smile in your face. But she loves you. Now which one of you weak need men going to say, I know she do? If you really loved her, what man wouldn't get upset? Same with the woman. <coughs> he said he loved you. <coughs> but he's so kind to everybody but you. He do for everybody but you. When you're around, he don't acknowledge you. And behind closed door, he's so nice. Get back out in the public, hey man, he'll leave your mind behind him. He's smiling at every woman and everything he can say. And then get mad when you look at him funny. Now what foolish woman don't think that man really loves her? But anyway, most of you would agree that would make you a little upset. But we think God ain't got a right to get upset when we say we love God, but we walk with every devil, high and low. The way we look, the way we talk, the way we dress, the way we act. Now somebody says, and some, some woman said, I, don't think, I think I can wear whatever I want to wear. It don't make no difference. Okay, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. So you wear the skin tight, bridge it out to work, you do with everything you got, and all of a sudden that leads to somebody say, girl, you know you fine. That know you fine leads to a phone number. That phone number leads to a date. That date leads to the bed. Mm -hmm. That's the fruit of how you look. That can happen when I'm holy. Yeah, you can dress holy, but the spirit ain't saying holy. Mm -hmm. Form of godliness, but denying the powers of love. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Don't think. L listen, the, the old folk used to say, uh, if you're not, you steal. Mm -hmm. If you give me in one, in one direction, you open up the doors to hold out. Because a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. And all I'm trying to get you people to understand is that you have to get to heaven. You have to meet your God real soon. Stop living like you're going to see tomorrow because you don't know. You don't know. Brother, sisters, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. 
Add virtue, faith, knowledge, temperance to your life. If you do these things, you won't fall. But don't walk around here like you all that. Because we're not. Only by his grace. Amen. And you young people and old people, you go against the scriptures and you think it's having fun and game. Ain't nothing fun about hell. Amen. Somebody says, I'm so sick of these people trying to scare folk with hell. Listen, let me tell you the truth about hell. The first thing I want to ask you all is what in hell do you want? Amen. Is there anything in hell you want? And the second thing, let me tell you the truth about hell. If God so loved us, why he put us in hell? That shows your ignorance. Because he does love you. That's why he's trying to keep you out of hell. Well, God created hell. Yes, but did you read the book? Anybody know? Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Hell wasn't made for us. That's why I'm saying, what in hell do you want? God is asking y'all, why are you looking at hell? I didn't make hell for you. So now what? Is he a loving God? Sure he is. I can see the angels now. Lord, why in the hell they want to go to hell? Because <laughs> they are their father of the devil. So if you go to hell, it's your fault. It wasn't made for you. But guess what? There's plenty of room. The prophet said, hell has enlarged her borders. Why is that? Because men are going into it. Anybody understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. Take your life serious. Don't let anybody play with it, and don't you play with it. You gotta stand before God. You have to answer before God. And many people are not going to make it. You understand that? Amen. But guess what? I can preach this all day and night. I'm about through, but guess what? What's that? It's not gonna matter to them that are lost. So I'm only talking to those who want to get right. Amen. Somebody say, what about the them that don't? What about the them that don't? Hell with them. Amen. To hell with them. Because that's where they're going. But to them that want to do right. Amen. Love God. Don't go to a place that God didn't intend for you to go. I don't believe no hell. You go to jail, don't you? A man can lock you up in jail and you can get locked up in hell. That's right. Amen. Anybody hear me? Amen. If God is such a good God, why did you such a good man or woman? Why you do what you do? Uh oh. But you can't stop this world from coming to an end because it's coming. Yes, sir. What you gonna do then? Get right. Stop faking. Yes, Lord. Sanctified folks. Amen. You Instagram sinners. <laughs> Facebook whores. <laughs> what else is out there? Twitter. Uh, Twitter what? Twitter, 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 Twitter what? <laughs> he said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Young Papa said that. Uh, I'll say Twitter hypocrites. <laughs> yeah, he said that. When I say Facebook boys, because a lot of times you can't tell some sanctified folk Facebook is sinners or not. Because you're looking like everything. You know? Looking like everything. Instagram, I think some, when I first heard Instagram, they said I was following them. I thought somebody was following somebody. <laughs> but they say, you follow me on Instagram. I said, how are you going to follow somebody? And then when you get to where they're going, you see it. Oh, what the world? But that's cool. That's cool. You see? And remember, when God judges you on your Facebook, you're going to say, God, I, I don't know why they're on there. He said, it's your face, ain't it? And it's your book. You know, y'all get all this stuff. And put all kind of ungodly stuff on that, and the rest of the hypocrites say, Girl, you look good. You're a hypocrite. And don't nobody say what some people do say, Y'all need to stop. Now, 
don't jobs use your media? Yes, they do. They do, don't they? Yes, the way y'all getting mad if God uses it. Uh -oh. How about if God said before you can get into the kingdom, let me see your Instagram and your Facebook and your Twitter. How many of y'all going to get into heaven on your Facebook? Tomorrow night at 12 o'clock, God's going to call everybody up a bowl bunch of folks going to be deleting stuff. <laughs> Unfriending folks. <laughs> and God's going to say, let me see your Facebook and your Instagram tape. Oh, looking pretty clean. Yeah, Lord, I that doesn't mean I'm going to sanctify folks. God's going to say that you, you did hear you did hear this thing, right? What's that? It's called the cloud. <laughs> Let's pull up your cloud. Isn't that what they call it? Right. Your backup. God said, I think you all call it Google. Your cloud. Oh, no. Nah. No, nah, Ron, you see that? That wasn't me. The art Kevin, that wasn't me. It looked like you. Okay. All right, then. God said, I tell you what, I'm going to judge you for you, and I'm going to judge that person in their cloud for them. If it connects, so be it. How about that? Y'all know y'all getting judged for that stuff, right? Right? Now, how about this? Suppose your Instagram, your Facebook, and they got all kind of ungodly stuff in there. You tell them, oh, wow, I love Jesus. And you don't feel bad about that? How come we want to play with God? Why don't we put a bunch of church songs up there and a bunch of holy things and people getting delivered in the field with the Holy Ghost and say, oh, I love the devil. And then people will say, he can't love the devil. She can't love the devil posting all this stuff. Exactly. Why don't we be a hypocrite for Satan? He think he got it, but our fruit don't show that he does. You young people hear me? I don't know why I've been trying to teach all this living. I've been pressing on you, inward living, getting real with God. And you don't know where it's going to fall. Could it be God's been the call for us? Or we finna get called? Now laugh at it. Go ahead and laugh. Am I being prophetic? Is somebody in here finna get called? Go ahead and laugh. Think it's funny. Now, if it was another preacher up there, you might smile. But when you got one whose words don't fall to the ground. I've been talking about this stuff a whole lot. Who, who is God trying to get ready to go on? And he's trying to give you a fair chance. Or who is the devil trying to come and steal? And God's trying to give you a fair warning to get it right so you can fight. Are you serious? This is a real world we live in. We fight a real enemy. Who is God giving mercy and grace to until you wake up and realize, oh my God. In the same chapter, Peter said, and I'll quote it. He said, my time of departure is at hand that I take off this old tabernacle and put on a new one in that same chapter. He said, my departure is at hand. In that same chapter, the man who wrote it was talking about his time has come. I would shut up, but I'm just going to talk. Now, anybody there whose time has come? We had a homecoming of one of our dearly beloveds years ago. And in that homecoming, I spoke and said, somebody in here will be next. And they were. But they were not as fortunate as she was. I'm trying to tell you, it's like somebody talking, we used to call it wolfing back in the 60s or 70s, I don't know what y'all call it now. Wolfing, I mean talking a bunch of junk. What they gonna do, how they gonna fight, they wolfing until the guy comes up. Hey man, I heard you been wolfing on me. And I ain't saying nothing, man, I ain't nothing, hey. And I heard you been woofing, man. So what? I ain't saying nothing, man. But that's how we did it in St. Louis, you know. I ain't saying nothing, but you better, 
Uh, while the guy said I heard you whooping on me, man, you better keep your eyes on him because the next thing you know, he gonna do what we call stealing. So, while you got confronted, you scared. I ain't said nothing. I ain't did nothing. No, man, I ain't did nothing. And the other guy just said, man, I don't know, man, I heard you whooping on me. I ain't did nothing. Yeah, when you turn around, come back around. What? He stole you. So y'all, a lot of y'all whooping. Until death steps at your door. Until the Lord comes and calls you. Now I heard you've been saying this and doing this and thinking that. Stop playing, children. And as a preacher hearing my words, stop playing. All these preachers getting up there calling everybody's false, talking about their writing, and what they teaching is wrong. Let's all get right with God. Let's all take heed to ourselves first. Let's stop putting folk in hell. I ain't putting y'all in hell. I'm just saying, what the hell do you want? Amen. But if, you, if, you, if Jesus said you are your father, the devil, why? Because the things the devil do what? <laughs> Let's take a vote. How many of y'all doing more things the devil do than God? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Let's determine who your daddy is. And so there's a drunk in the congregation. Say, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a raise my hand a little bit toward the Lord. I got my other hand all the way up toward the devil, but red, I'm going to raise my hand a little bit up toward the Lord. Oh, man, why are you going to raise your hand up a little bit for the Lord? Because I know I'm drunk and I'm living like a devil, but a little bit, I, I can be God's stepchild. <laughs> stepchild. Can't have it both ways. You can't drink from two cups. That's right. May the hand of protection be upon all of us. May the grace of God keep us. And by no means am I prophesying life or death. I'm asking that God keep us. That his long suffering give us a chance to check on ourselves. Understand what I'm saying. Because some of you are too foolish to understand that when you give yourself more to wrong than right, you're making a choice. Mm -hmm. You're serving the God of this world. He that is righteous is righteous only if he does righteous. Mm -hmm. And if you don't abide in the doctrine of Christ, you don't belong to Jesus. What do you think church is for? To get us right with God. Everybody want to be right. Every preacher wants to act like they're a wizard. Got all the wisdom. Let's just preach the book like it is. In that same chapter, it says the word of God is not with private interpretation. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Now, I, you see, God gave me a special revelation. Now, can I ask you a question, yeah? God gave you a special revelation that nobody else got, uh-huh. How, how, how come you don't have a revelation how to come out of your sin? How come you don't have a revelation to all your problems? Let me tell you how bold church folk are. The word of God will come forth and say do this and do that, and church folk will go right out and do just the opposite, and then post it. <laughs> That's bold. And you're the temple of God. And you think you're not going to answer for that? Christ died to save us what? From our what? Sin. sin means to miss the mark. He died to save us from ungodliness and from our sin. If we say we have none, we're a liar. So don't say you ain't got no sin. And I'm going to keep putting Jesus first. Amen. Amen. I ain't got no stones to throw because we can all fall. But I'm going to tell it right, and I'm trying to teach you on the whole road and tell you, church people, stop faking. Stop faking. You living like a devil, you are not saved. God, me tell you speaking. God has given you grace to get it right. So let's pray we wake up tomorrow. Let's pray there's not a car that's going to make a wrong turn. Let's go make another wrong turn. 
that's gonna run a red light right when you cross it. May God have mercy on us. May God keep us. Everybody hearing me? Amen. You hear what the prophet said? Amen. I pray God give us life. I pray God keep us in protection. I received a phone call last night. Bishop prayed. A friend of mine called for prayer. Both sons got shot. In surgery now. Pray. I'll pray. God's grace is real. They, they recovered. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Remember, one of the mothers and I, when we were working on the streets, we got a, a phone call. A young lady called. A friend got shot. I think it was in the eye. The mouth or the eye. And the girl was kind of ghetto, but we were working with her. She had been born again. She told him, I got friends. She got on that phone and called. I said, one of my friends just got shot. I think it was in the eye. I told him, I got people. Tell the bishop to pray. We prayed in the name of Jesus. And miraculously, they survived. Amen. Things happen every day, every moment, every minute. Could you imagine being back sleeping, not praying, all of a sudden a tragedy comes? Oh, you better hope the grace of God is there. And if the grace of God is there in your prayer and God spoofs and, and does the situation, believe me, you know it ain't you. Because you ain't right. Amen. It's the grace of God. Amen. But that's still good enough that he gave me grace for the situation which gave me the opportunity to get right. Amen. Precious God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We appreciate you. Let your healing virtue go forth. Let peace be still. Let your healing virtue go forth. Let the Spirit of God encourage us to do right. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. It's high time that we take life serious. And stop playing with our own soul. That's all I'm trying to do. And encourage the people to take life serious. Because without you, we can do nothing. Let the healing virtue go forth. I pray that you would strengthen us and cleanse us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Meditations of my heart. Be Think about where you stand with God. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable. Lord. You're gonna be real. You got one soul. The words of my mouth. If we can see it, and He forgive us. Come on. And he forgives us. Come on, people. Let's take advantage of it and do right. And he doesn't hold the past against us. Neither does he hold our faults against us. But we want to get angry because he's messing with our pigs. When Jesus killed the man that had legions of devils that were surrounded by pig farmers, and the demons said to Jesus, cast us into those pigs. Jesus being a Jew, he didn't care about no pigs. So he cast the demons out of the man into the pigs. And the demons drove the pigs mad and they drowned in the sea. And when the town people came, they were concerned about the crazy man that was made sober. They became afraid because they lost their pigs. Don't love your sin more than you do your deliverance. Let go of your peace and let the holiness of God come in. Let the words, think about it, be accepted. 
touchable. Lord, help me to be right. Don't you worry about the fish of Christ. You better worry about the fish of Jesus. That's what you need to worry about. You better worry about the Lord. Shame on everybody that knows to do right, but you don't. Shame on you. That's all the grace you got for God. And then we want God to accept our sin. Are you serious? If you don't accept his holiness, why should he accept your sin? Shame on you if you know better. And still do wrong. What are you telling Jesus? What are you telling God? Your love is worth nothing. God, help us to do right. Help us to first look at ourselves before we look at anyone else. Help us to look at ourselves. Give us boldness and give us strength to do the right things. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Help us to praise them in the right way. Take a little offering. 